Hey everybody, it's Johnny K with Master Photography Now, and today we're going to be looking at a very famous image that was on the cover of a National Geographic when I was a kid. It was 1985, and I was nine years old, and it was actually taken the year before by an, a photographer for National Geographic in a refugee camp of Afghanis in Pakistan, because at the time the Soviets had occupied Afghanistan and so it's a really interesting story and so as you can see here she's on the cover of the National Geographic it's all kind of tattered and faded you can tell that this particular scan it looks like it had been checked out a million times in a library so it's all faded and beat up and and bent so let's look at the original and you can tell this looks substantially better the colors are very vibrant in fact they're probably too vibrant. Um, I'm going to just read you a little bit about the history of this image so that we can talk about that. And then we'll get into the technical parts of the image. So it's a 1984 photographic portrait of Sharbat Gula. And that's uh, she's also known as Sharbat Bibi. And she was taken by she, this image was taken by photojournalist Steve McCurry. And uh, the, the identity, they didn't know who she was uh, until early 2002. And uh, they actually had a reunion later, and I'll show you a picture of that. But this photo has been likened to the Leonardo da Vinci's painting Mona Lisa and has been called the world's, the first world's third world Mona Lisa, which is, which is interesting if you think about that, because uh, the Mona Lisa is so famous. And hey, I'll tell you, this picture is really famous. I re remember it vividly from when I was a kid. Uh, the image became emblematic of refugee girl and woman located in some distant camp, deserving of the compassion of the Western viewer. So uh, she was a student in one of the schools there at the camp, and it was by Steve McCurry, and he used Kodachrome 64 slide film, color slide film. We also call it transparency film. I used to photograph with this all the time. It's it's really beautiful film. You get a, a nice contrast ratio, amazing saturated color, and very fine grain. And for reproduction at the time, it was common to use transparency film. So all the pros that were going for publication were shooting transparency film, and then later having it scanned. Uh, a lot of them would use what's called a drum scanner, but you, you guys have probably seen film scanners or a flatbed scanner at some point in your travels, although maybe you haven't if you're like 19. Maybe you don't know what any of that is. So with this film, you actually had to be pretty much right on with your exposure. There was no messing around, and there wasn't as much Photoshop as there is today. You know, they had very, very limited uh, photo editing skills in in the computer back in the day. They could do stuff in the dark room, and they could scan stuff in, in the, in the early versions of Photoshop, which I believe is in the 80s, but I'd have to look that up to be sure. But um, he used a Nikon FM2 camera, which is an all-manual metal camera, and a beautiful Nikon 105 millimeter lens, a, a 2.5 maximum aperture lens it's a beautiful portrait lens and obviously from this picture that you can tell uh, he did not know who she was he did not get her name but they did later reunite and we'll check that image out later so let's go ahead and look at the image again and if you zoom in you can see that there's actually no detail here in the scan of the blacks and this would have been common for a really high contrast situation with transparency film. Now, I don't know which scan this is. It looks pretty decent. But in the slide or in the transparency, the original, it's not the negative. It's a positive. But it looks like a little negative, a little piece of film. Uh, you probably didn't have much detail here. The only way he could have gotten around that would be by, you know, adding some light on this side, and that would have been by possibly using a bounce card or a reflector of some sort. And it would have added an extra highlight in her eye and filled in some of the shadows on her face and in her pores here. So it could have been nice. However, this is very authentic, and it's photojournalism. So... I mean, he was posing this. This isn't technically photojournalism, but it's meant to be photojournalism. So, you know, there wouldn't be a whole bunch of setup necessarily and, and, and lighting changes. So it is what it is. You know, you don't have much detail. These blacks are crushed. 
um, and in her skin since the light is coming from the side and there isn't much bounce or reflection coming back or light coming back on this side of her face you can see a lot of these pores and things now for the feel of this image that's actually great because she's a little girl and yet she's looking pretty like war torn right she's in a war refugee camp and life isn't easy and she probably i don't even know the last time she had her bath who knows right but um let, let's get back to the image itself as far as uh, the the technical aspects the color in this particular uh scan or this version of this image which i have not manipulated yet but maybe somebody did when they posted it i feel like the green and maybe the aqua i just feel like they're they're too saturated so yes she's got these amazing green eyes that kind of captivate you but it almost looks like she's wearing fake contacts because the color does not look real or natural and so you can do uh you could change this or go back one of two ways uh, I would assume that it didn't look like this on the original transparency and that somebody boosted this after the scan. So uh, what you can do is you can scroll in your develop uh, tabs over here on the right. You can scroll down to the, the individual colors and just play with the aqua. I mean, let's just take it all the way down. Okay, so actually her eyes look a little more realistic, but now our background's gone, right? So we can raise that up until her eyes start to look fake again so i would say like maybe even right in here right and maybe drop the green just a little bit okay now the color of the image her, itself um her skin she's got dark skin uh you know she's middle eastern here and yet her skin looks almost a little blue to me and so there was no white balance on a camera back in the day. You were using film. You either used daylight film or you used tungsten film. Tungsten film was balanced for an indoor light source like a regular light bulb. And then there was daylight film, which was balanced for actual sun, full sun out in the daylight. And so if you wanted to get a different color, you would actually have to screw a colored filter on the front of your lens. Now, did he have one on the front of this lens? Possibly. But it's not enough because the light coming in from a blue shaded sky is is very blue. So I would I would warm this picture up a bit and we can just go by eye and we'll go too far. So now she looks orange and then we'll come back until it looks good, which I think is like right in here, maybe a little bit less just if you want to make it feel more natural. But I think that her skin tone and the tone of this and the background was probably a bit more in there. And also, I'm feeling a little bit of green in her face still, so you can just raise the magenta just a little bit. And I really like that. So let's go and look at the original color compared to our adjusted color. And so I like that. It warms it up a bit. It's still intense. It's still beautiful. It still shows the grit and the photojournalism. Um, so we talked about our detail here. Uh, being lost but not much you could do without a, a, a bounce or a fill and then probably the last thing I would do because her eyes are so captivating and they're just kind of sucking you right in there um, I would probably want to just darken the edges of the picture a bit and you guys uh, who watch me a lot you're gonna you're gonna remember this because I do it a lot because I feel like it helps in the composition of a picture so let's go too far okay let's let's go way too far all right so that actually feels almost uh like it's a photo portrait right and we don't want that feel but you can lighten it up until the green starts feeling even but not too even because you want to keep us here in the middle so i really like that so if you go back to the original that's what the original looked like and this is what i would have done to it now, I think the picture's beautiful, and obviously it won many awards, and it was very famous. So it's great just how it is, but this particular scan and the color balance and just what I saw there, that's what I would do. So tell me, what would you do? And uh, please submit your pictures to me at john at kemmerling.com if you would like me to uh, critique them for you. Uh, just a couple other quick notes I want to show you. There's, you know, usually when you do a photo shoot, there's more images. So here's another one that the photographer had done, and he had her 
bring her little uh, scarf up in front of her face like a lot of the Muslim women at the time they would do that and so he just was you know uh, you know uh, focusing in on her eyes her very special um, rare color eyes captivating eyes and you can see he focused right on the eyes and you got a little plane of focus right in here but right behind it's out of focus and even her dirty fingernails are out of focus in the foreground I probably would have liked to have seen a little more depth of field in this picture personally uh, just to show the the grit in her hands uh, since they're included in the picture uh, they could have wrapped the veil around her face and shown just her eyes without her hands and then the shallow depth of field would have been fine but to since her fingers and hands are in the shot I would have liked to have seen that the other thing I would do probably to this image is just take a brush and drop the exposure and the highlights and just kind of paint this area in over here to keep us in the photo and you don't have to go that dark but let's warm it up a little for some reason it's blue there we go and uh, maybe you could even do the opposite so make a new brush and on her eyes you could actually lighten it and lighten the uh, the shadows just a bit and just kind of paint this in right here and make them pop even more I wanted to show you one more picture of the reunion and it, it's it's not actually their reunion but it shows him with photos from their reunion and you can see here she is modern day holding her portrait as a child wearing her her garb that she would be seen in you know her uh, a burqa or hijab or whatever you call this and there he is by his original a nice a nice large poster print and then here is the modern a current portrait of her as an older woman. He didn't find out who she was or take her name when he took her photograph and it took 30 odd years to uh, to reunite again and do another portrait and it's funny you can tell that's the same woman with those uh, piercing eyes. So there you have it. Tell me what you thought about this picture. Please comment below and uh, let me know what you would like to learn about. And again, if you would like to submit your pictures for critique, send them to john at kemmerling.com. Remember to subscribe to Master Photography Now and hit that bell notification icon. And please share with your friends so we can grow together and we will see you next time.